All right, good afternoon. Today's Friday, the uh, 19th of February, 2018. This is ASQ Inspection Division Conference. This is uh, Track C, Session 5. The title of this presentation is Developing Key Strategic Suppliers. It is my great pleasure to introduce you, uh, George Cutler, the Director of Quality for Wireless Telecom um, out of uh, North Jersey. So George. Thanks. Good luck. What is the clicker here? Uh, as Jim said, I'm uh, Director of Quality Assurance for Wireless Telecom Group. We're located in northern New Jersey. My background is in quality assurance and operation management. Uh, I've been uh, lucky enough to travel all the world developing suppliers, working with suppliers, and, and developing partnerships with those suppliers. Uh, I'm going to give you a short overview of the purpose of having a strategic supplier relationship, uh, strategic supplier characteristics, what makes up a strategic supplier, why we should be having them, uh, the supplier selection process, information exchange, performance measurements, risk of sharing, and a summary of what all that means to your organization as you move forward. Why strategic relationships? Well, we want to optimize the potential for the supply chain. We want to develop these relationships so that uh, we have firm commitments and quick responses to the needs of your own organization. Uh, businesses change, the markets change, you have to be prepared for those changes and having close relationships helps you to deal with that. You want to reduce supply chain costs, the more you deal with a particular supplier, the more opportunity to reduce those costs uh, exists. Improve quality, close communication, identification of uh, what measures or expectations you have up front, and how to move forward to meet the strategic objectives of your organization with this key supplier. You want to lever leverage the supplier technology advantages or capabilities. Uh, so you might have the capabilities in-house, but having a supplier on the outside who does uh, this day in and day out uh, provides more capability and capacity to your own organization and, and gives you a greater sense of um, uh, flexibility. Uh, I might not want to build in-house versus build outside in the future. Uh, develop uh, innovative solutions. Supply chain is how the product or parts or materials are delivered to your organization might be uh, more conducively uh, modified in if you do a Kanban system or a um, delivery method, point of use delivery, you can develop a relationship to uh, create solutions to make things more streamlined in your own organization. Uh, you could use a strategic supplier to expand market offerings. They might private label things for you, material products that you don't currently sell, they could, you could sell. Um, we deal a lot with uh, uh, Asian suppliers who manufacture products at the same quality level that we do, uh, but they provide a different um, spectrum of material or cap uh, process function, product functions that you might choose to sell within your, within your market that you're uh, selling in North America. Uh, you might re reduce lead time and desi design cycle time. A lot of the suppliers that you may use uh, are build to print and getting them in the design cycle up front allows you to reduce that cycle time with a minimal back and forth. They have inputs and technology and ideas that they might want to see in the design prior to it being deployed. Uh, finally, uh, joint strategic planning efforts. Uh, it's important that your supply base is in line with your expectations for your expansion in the future. Where your organization is going and when it's a, uh, how is this supplier going to be there to support you moving forward? Some characteristics of a strategic supplier, uh, they're key to your business growth. Uh, suppliers that have, um, 
provide materials that may be high risk or provide uh, um, a logistics advantage that is uh, conducive to uh, your location and where your markets are. They might provide custom engineering services that would be a strategic advantage to your product and your markets. Uh, technology advantage, uh, materials are only available through that particular supplier or they stock a particular material that may not be uh, available on the open market or easily acquired. They might have a regional or logistics advantage. Uh, I have five suppliers that are located in a five mile radius of my location. You saw this morning um, BMW's infrastructure all in one state. That's an advantage. They can get more deliveries per day, per week. Uh, some char more characteristics, uh, sole source suppliers, only source available. There, there's no one else in the world who provides this particular product. And it might give you an advantage to, uh, to your market or your customer base. Uh, single sources, uh, the only source, you may choose to only use one source because of different reasons. They always have the material on hand, the response of the price, the uh, uh, logistics location. Uh, cooperation, talent, engineering base, those are all uh, characteristics you may want to use a single source supplier. There may be other people in the world who can do it, but why should they do it when you have this relationship with the strategic supplier? Um, you develop this close working relationship that uh, helps you anticipate what the supplier's needs are and the supplier anticipating what your needs are and they align with your business objectives and philosophies. They, s they have the same values of your organization and they may be uh, uh, advantageous to communicate and share ideas in the future. The supplier selection method uh, focuses on a common vision, uh, agreed strategic uh, activities, a, a trust and open communication between the supplier and you uh, and your own organization. You disclose business drivers. Uh, this market or this customer is expected to uh, slow down in the next six months. Maybe we shouldn't be putting as much on the uh, stock on finished goods, or maybe we shouldn't buy as much uh, raw material as we used to. Uh, and the same thing on the other side. We're expecting an uptick in, in volume. Let's uh, start building up stock. Uh, performance. Uh, does your strategic supply base have the right certifications or uh, uh, qualifications to meet your expectations in the future? Do they have a continuous improvement program that will lower the operating costs? Uh, and range uh, agree upon business goals. We advocate uh, communicating to our su key strategic suppliers on a yearly basis on where the business is going, where the business has been, and what we're expecting in the future. Uh, we want to be proactive with these uh, suppliers and anticipate business needs and provide cr uh, creative solutions to problems. Continuous improvement is based on uh, creative solutions. Uh, supplier qualifications uh, develop a long-term mutual beneficial relationship. Uh, you don't want a supply strategic supplier who you monopolize. A strategic supplier that you're buying 80 per you're 80 percent of their sales, that might as well be a captive supplier, and that's a different different uh, solution. You want to apply a systematic approach to qualifying suppliers. You, a needs assessment: w How do you define when you need a strategic supplier and when you don't need a strategic supplier? The supplier qualification process and the suppliers capabilities, uh, product and process qualifications, supplier control and measurement, and periodic review and planning all make up a systematic approach for qualifying suppliers to be strategic. Uh, looks further. Uh, this is a flow chart of uh, what I just discussed as far as a strategic uh, strategic approach to uh, um, 
strategic uh, supplier management. Uh, new suppliers or supplier improvement requirements. Identify the need up front. Uh, sele select a particular supplier, then qualify that supplier. Uh, the then you want to qualify the product and the process, and then report on the supplier's control and monitoring methods. First, the needs assessment. Uh, new products are required for a new s supplier. If um, uh, the des design cycle in a particular organization requires that a new, new part or product be selected from a new supplier, that's a need assessment. The capacity requirements for a new supplier, you've exceeded the supply base capabilities and resources, and you have to go out and find a new supplier who may provide that uh, capacity. The uh, supplier is not performing as needed. This current supply base hasn't, uh, hasn't stepped up or hasn't been flexible enough or the price advantages haven't been, hasn't been improving or uh, process improvements haven't been uh, coming as, as frequently as you would expect. Therefore, you would need a new supplier. And then finally, a risk assessment. Your business is growing faster than your supply base is, is uh, growing. You should look for that new supplier to provide continual capabilities and capacities to serve your customers in the future. Then the su supplier selection would be based on technology, cost structure, the products that they may provide may be different than your other suppliers. Uh, the business model may require uh, maybe more in line with your business model. Uh, capability assessment and location, logistics, uh, where the supplier is located, all should be considered during supplier selection. Supplier qualification, is there an, or is there an organizational structure that can support your need? Uh, are the right people in place? Do they have the right knowledge base? Are the right resources and equipment available to you? Um, to uh, move forward with the supplier. Uh, there should be a process assessment, system assessment, uh, capabilities assessment, quality management system assessment. Uh, process and product qualification. Once you've selected that supplier, uh, they you want to give them an opportunity to make sure that they're going to provide the right product and at the right quality level that you're expecting in the future. So we go through a qualification process of the product. Uh, they would provide a sample set. We do a first article on it. We do a f uh, failure modes effects analysis. Where is the potential failure mechanisms that may occur and how are the suppliers controlling that? All of those are part of your assessment of the supplier's capabilities and qualifying of their process. Supplier control and monitoring. At, at the end, once you've developed the supplier, you, you, ha you have to make sure they're, we have to continue monitoring the quality that they're providing. Uh, is that, um, is it on time? Is it to the conformance that we're looking for? Uh, should source inspection be done for a period of time to see what's happening in the facility before it's released to your own facility? Uh, periodically, uh, uh, conduct first articles on product, do some non-destructive testing, uh, auditing of their process. Uh, some metrics that might be uh, used could be uh, discrepant material reports, uh, supplier corrective action requests, on-time delivery reporting, uh, periodic program reviews, and field performance. Once the product is delivered, integrated into your product, and shipped out to the field, how is it performing? Is it, uh, is it meeting the expectations of your customer base in um, durability, reliability? And then finally, finally, uh, supplier performance management, uh, reviewing this information with your suppliers. Uh, product conformance, on-time delivery, responsiveness, schedule changes, how do they react to schedule changes? Are they prepared for upticks, down, downturns? Um, is there a value uh, competitive uh, 
relationship between the supplier and you. You're, you're the customer. We conduct these on a yearly basis to make sure we're both in line with our strategic objectives and prepared for the future. So methods of control and performance monitoring would be a risk and probability of impact to the customer through a failure to deliver latent product failures and safety factors. We, we, when we do a failure modes effects analysis, we assess the risk of what a failure would be and how do we go about mitigating that, mitigating it to what cost and what is the advantage or probability that this defect would escape the control process in the manufacturer. Uh, technology available and capabilities to conduct uh, verification activities on site at the supplier or uh, within the facilities that you own. Uh, performance, suppliers past performance and continuous pr product conformance. Are they improving the process and are we experiencing cost advantages as a result of those improvements? And product cycles, continuous production or uh, sporadic production. That yearly exchange of information should be constant. Uh, we also encourage, depending on the volume of material and the severity of the product, a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly review. Uh, you have to assess your needs, the wants of the supplier, and the risk and opportunities moving forward. Uh, often we see that uh, there's an opportunity to take an assembly we're building in-house, and we might outsource it to another su supplier just so we increase capabilities and capacity internally. Uh, share the future expectations, technology trends, and market trends so that we're both on the same page and we're both working to the same songbook. We want to share our business planning process with them. This is what our vision is for the future or the next three years. We need somebody who's going to be in line with those expect uh, those vision, that vision and can provide us the capabilities and products we'll need to to meet that expectation. Is there a cost performance and quality performance? Where do they stand? Have they been on time? Have they had the defective material? When there is a problem, how do they react to that problem? Are they quick to respond? Do they understand the difference between containment and uh, corrective action, rework and repair? And then risk sharing. They'll step up and, and provide us with a, an area to support inventory risk, to reduce lead time and enhance material availability. Uh, cycle times are getting shorter and shorter with the markets and customers in, in our industry. They're expecting turnarounds in, in two weeks of product rather than two months or two, two years. Uh, do they have the capital equipment or are they going to invest in capital equipment that's necessary to meet the vision for the next three years? Do they have the human resources that, that they need to implement this equipment, implement the processes, and control the, the products and materials they're providing? Uh, any industry risks, such as, as regulatory requirements? Is there a, a change in laws that will affect them? Is there um, uh, hazardous materials that might be further controlled and, and maintained that could cause them increased costs. How is that going to affect our supply chain? We need to know those things up front so we understand the complete risk. And finally, a summary of the strategic supplier relationship. It's two-way, mutually beneficial relationship. We want to make sure that it's transparent. Uh, we both understand where, our, where we're going, what we're doing, and what we expect as a as uh, growth in the future. There's a uh, shared risk and there's shared gain. Uh, we're sharing strategic planning uh, and product development activities. We're planning on releasing this new product mix. Do you have the capabilities, equipment, and people to, to support that need? We want to foster a mutual trust. They can come into our facility. We can come into their facility. Uh, we want to solve problems open and honestly and provide greater value in technology, responsiveness, innovation, resulting in a competitive advantage for your organization.
Any questions? Mostly sales and forecast information. Um, uh, and any industry information, uh, material shortages in the industry. Uh, someone brought up this morning uh, during um, Eric's uh, presentation about the um, tariffs. That's how are the tariffs affecting my aluminum supplier? How is, is that increasing my cost? Do I have to pass that cost along to my customer? Is it going to result in shortages? If there is shortages, should I be preparing for those now? Should I be buying ahead? Uh, costly in some cases and, and the high risk of poor quality, but uh, it's better than being without materials. You don't sell it, you don't make any money. Going, going back a couple of slides on the information exchange, um, continually communicating specifically to supplier performance and their evaluations. Um, what level of that inf information at that level are you sharing daily uh, on a very, very frequent basis versus maybe quarterly or annually? There's, um, uh, there's events that occur that have to be communicated immediately, and those events have to take uh, a form of uh, corrective action. So you want to contain where, where the material is in the supply chain, uh, how it's affected. That's happening daily, and it's ad hoc. Uh, on a monthly basis, we're communicating what our needs are in the as far as um, uh, we're expecting we'll increase volume next month of this product or this piece part, and we need more of it. Uh, on a quarterly basis, we're communicating performance of the material that has come in and how we've used it, what volumes do we have and what do we don't have. On an annual basis, we're talking strategic. We're talking about how uh, we have had problems with this particular part and it's associated with this machining operation, uh, we need you to go out and get another machine and diff train your operator differently or we need to really focus on this because we're going to need that, that, uh, that machine in the future. How is that managed um, domestically versus maybe internationally? Like do you have Asian suppliers? Mm -hmm. um, do you have people that go and visit the facility or is it handled um, via telecommunications? It be typical. Uh, on a strategic basis, do it face-to-face, -face, even internationally. Uh, telecommunications on a quarterly basis. And then uh, emails and ad hoc methods, the other. But it, it internationally, it works the same way. Uh, we have the luxury of having a supply base located in a particular state, like BMW, or, or all over the world. You still have to communicate properly to us. George, what's your, been your experience in, in uh, dealing with non-product suppliers, measuring them, putting them in the process such as service or software? Uh, just as important if it's a strategic uh, uh, supplier. Uh, um, we use subcontractors to develop software programs. They're critical to our product and how we deploy our product. Uh, we, we've identified a number of strategic software suppliers who we work with year in and year out. And when we improve our products, uh, we expect them to be available to us to change the software as such. Works the same way. Uh, we're developing new product. We want to bring our strategic supplier in here. We want to hear them. Uh, Windows 8 is out and Windows 10 is in. Can you do that? <laughs> It'd be slightly a, a different, slightly measurement system on yeah. that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But the sa same rules apply. Any other questions? Thank you. Bar's open. <laughs>